Hey friends and welcome back to the curated home. We are halfway to Halloween. Can you believe it? Yes, we are halfway there and I am all for it. Now, fall and Halloween are my favorite time of the year, and I know that it is the favorite time of the year for so many of you that are watching me. And for those of you that are not fall or Halloween people, you might wanna skip this video. Some of you might be really into fall, but you're not Halloween people. That's okay, because today we're doing a craft that kind of fits in either bucket. We're going to make a rusted, primitive, or if you're not in a primitive, it just looks very fall, old, you know, old looking tin jack-o'-lanterns. And they're not scary, they're very, cute and quaint and would fit in pretty much any fall decor. Um, you can actually not use the jack-o'-lantern face. You could turn it around and use the back of it. What we're going to do with this pumpkin is basically turn a plastic 97 cent bucket um, candy jack-o'-lantern jack from Walmart into a rusted beautiful piece of art and I have already filmed all of it. I'm piecing it together, and I hope you enjoy this project. So for the Halfway to Halloween project, I'm going to transform these plastic pumpkins that were 97 cents at one time at Walmart. And I remember I got the blue because that's all they had left when I went to go get them, and what I tried to make was the tower and I put witches hats on them. Um, it did not work out well because I wanted them to anchor my door outside and I did not secure them with anything but hot glue. Um, I should have used E6000 as well. And I also did not seal them so the paint peeled. I mean, it was just one of those beginner projects years ago that did not go well. But I held on to these, pulled them apart. I got all the glue off. Now what I want to do is spray paint them black again. And I think the reason I, I thought I'd spray paint is because the inside is that color blue. And I don't want them to look that way. I want to do the rust color inside as well. So I'm going to start with just spray painting them all black. This is my spray paint area when I can't go outside. I just put these cardboard boxes pieces up. I have my Lazy Susan here, and I'm just going to spray paint these bad boys and let them dry. I'm actually going to try this metallic gold and see if I like this better, because this might be easier to do a rust effect on than the base black, so we're going to give it a shot. <music> As you can see, they are all painted inside and out. The very bottom I painted on this one, the first one, and then thought that was a bad idea because it's going to stick to the plate. So I didn't paint the bottoms of the others. I'm just going to do um, my own like metal covering. Nobody's really going to see the bottom. So as long as I just do something on the bottom later, it's fine. This way they can dry everywhere but the bottom. It's going to take a little bit to dry. I did a very heavy coat. And I'm okay with some of the dripping that I have on a few because I went heavy um, because I'm doing the rust technique. So it's going to, 
aid in the process of, you know, that of, of rusting it anyway. Um, any imperfections are going to work to my advantage. I just needed a base cover. And this is perfect to use pay, uh, spray paint for because it adheres nicely to plastic, number one. Number two, it's a much faster process than doing all this by hand. Um, and three, um, spray, on, spray on paints come in a wide variety of effects and colors. So don't sleep on the spray paint if you're intimidated by it. Don't be practice on something that you're okay with having imperfections on. I have spray painted a ton of things. The only thing I haven't attempted to spray paint yet is furniture that I'm repurposing because I, as you can see, I don't, I have a heavy hand. I'm not very smooth when it comes to the spray paint from the can. I might be different. It might be different if I got one of the um, sprayers and did a professional sprayer attachment to the can. That I probably would be better at because you can disperse it a little bit differently. But coming straight from the can, it's hard to have that control. So I don't use it for furniture uh, flips. I only use it for projects and crafting. Uh, but they're, they're drying nicely. This one is... Oh, that one's pretty much dry. I'm still going to seal them, but I'm not going to, I might actually seal them and then do the rust technique um, over top. I'm not sure because mm, the sealing part I'm, I'm iffy on because what I'm thinking is I'm definitely going to need to add some rust color. And this is kind of what I come up with. You can buy um, kits from Hobby Lobby, rust, uh, rusting kits. But I'm going to try using some of this copper metallic. And then I'm going to I'm gonna go over it with this to give me that color. I'm also going to use some of my um, Art Deco paint. This is the color Cinnamon Stick. I'm gonna try that as well, and just kind of blotchily like <laughs> throw this stuff on. This, these are the ones that I can use for the bottom, so those get set aside for that. But these two colors in combination, the, the metallic and the acrylic, I'm going to kind of play with, and some black, and try to get that real rusty, primitive kind of look. And then I'm gonna go in and do the cinnamon and decoupage technique decoupage cinnamon and mom potch technique to give it the texture of hard rust meanwhile so i just came upstairs from the spray painting you definitely should spray paint outside or in a well ventilated area i know i'm going to pay the price for that later but it's raining outside so i can't do the spray paint outside i could have done it in the garage but Really don't want to do it in the garage either. Doing it in the basement in the craft room is fine. Um, I've done it before. It'll the smell goes away in a few days. <laughs> so the pumpkins are dry. It's the next day, and now I'm going to start that rust effect on them. Maggie has her little bed over there. <laughs> I craft twist my mom. Yes, I do. So I've just put some of those uh, colors down that I wanted, the black chalk paint. I'm going to use to fill in the eyes and the background of the mouth. I'm also going to um, use some of that black probably to just add another uh, layer and texture to the paint technique. This is the metallic copper, and this is the acrylic cinnamon stick color. And I'm just gonna play around with those first, and then we will go on to our final, not final, but almost final step of adding the cinnamon rust technique. I'll show you that step when we get to it. And um, then the final thing is to seal it. So let me get a good, paintbrush for those eyes. So we have the eyes, the nose, and the mouth painted. Now we're going to start adding those other colors and see what we come up with. So what I've found that makes the best rust color 
is using a combination of the cinnamon brick acrylic deco art paint and the copper metal metallic paint along with a little bit of black. If you mix those together, you're gonna get this rust color and that's what I like. Um, so you're gonna continue to mix and what I'm finding is because I'm only mixing a little bit at a, at a time, because I don't wanna over make this color, um, I'm mixing as I go, you're going to get variations of that rust color based upon how much you mix and given when you mix and all of that which is great because the effect in true rust is like, it, it isn't perfect. You don't get a solid rust color. You don't get like solid rusting over a piece. It's, it's you know, darker in places, less rusted in some places, the actual color of the piece is coming through in some places. So all those imperfections are actually aiding in the um, whole look that I'm going for. <music> So now that it is all painted, I am going to cover it in cinnamon. Um, and literally, I'm just popping the top on the cinnamon. And we are just going, well, I'm not going to pour it. I'm going to shake it. But we pop the top. And we shake. I will start. I'm just going to give you a uh, quick little... <laughs> while the paint's still wet. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of how I do it because I'm gonna need two hands for this and I'm in gloves, so it's gonna be a pain to try to get this in my tripod, so I'm just gonna hold the camera. But I'm just gonna go all over like that. Once it is covered in cinnamon like this, I'm going to go over it and brush the whole thing with um, Mod Podge. It does get a little gooey and messy, but continue with the process. Just keep painting it and what it's going to end up looking like after you've painted it with the Mod Podge to seal it is it's going to be this kind of a look. It is already starting to dry. I'm going to let it dry for 24 hours and then I'm going to just take a look at it and do some final touches and add my wire, um, my wire handle and then it will be done. The next day all right, it is a couple days later. Actually, we did these Sunday. Today is Tuesday evening. And I just got home from work, came downstairs, and I'm looking at them. And they actually turned out pretty good. I'm actually liking the way that they look. Each of them are different. They're stuck to the things. They even have that rusty feel to them. They're very textured because of the um, cinnamon. So I am loving it. Now I can see where it wore, wore off a little bit here. So I am gonna go back and do a little touch up um, to these, but overall I'm happy. There's cinnamon inside too. I'm not going to do the rust technique on the inside. I'm just gonna leave that gold. Um, I'm going to paint, I might paint their teeth. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like a cream kind of aged color to their teeth or not, like a tannish kind of, you know, like a grunge color or not. I'm not sure. So we will see. Um, but I am happy how this turned out. I'm loving it. I'm not sure if I'm going to touch that up. But yeah, I'm going to touch it up with Mod Podge and Cinnamon.
going to let them dry for another 24 to 48 hours. And then I'll see if they need any um, touch-ups. And then after that, I will seal them at the handle and this project will be done. Okay, I lied. We're actually going to add something else. I want to make a lid for the pumpkin. I want it to look like the pumpkin top with the stem has been cut off. So to replicate that, I am going to use Model Magic and we are going to, um, I found a lid, a plastic lid that would fit on top of the pumpkin. And I'm going to use that as my guide to work the clay out to the edges. Um, to give me the base form. Now we need to work the middle of that form without changing the size into um, what can then kind of make the stem. So I'm literally just, um, you know, keeping that form as I go around, making sure that I still keep the shape, the width, or the, you know, the size that I needed. And then I'm pushing up in the middle and sorry, the camera anger is angle is horrible, but I'm pushing up the middle to begin that stem looking, you know, process and I'm playing with it until I get it exactly the way that I want. it the way that I want it. I'm going to add some final detailing by using just a wood dowel, like a skinny skewer, and I'm going to just make some markings so that it looks like, you know, it gives it some texture and depth. And then I'm going to make those lines all the way around the base so it looks like those realistic lines that are in the pumpkin. that it would work and as you can see here's the pumpkin and it fits let me show you it fits right on the pumpkin see um now it's not exact of course it doesn't fit down inside but because this is kind of foamy i guess i could still kind of manipulate it in but anyway that's just to give you an idea now let's paint these so what i'm gonna do is use that same uh, mixture of colors. There's three colors. And I'm going to get that, try to match that rust color for the base. Just gonna mix until I get it the way that I want. That beautiful rust color. And then, of course, the cinnamon's gonna darken it up even more, so. Keep on mixing. And then the stem part, as I go up the stem, this is for the base of this lid. And then as I go up the stem, I'm going to darken that color up or maybe lighten that color up. I don't know. I wanna give it a different color than the rest of it. And I probably will not do the rusted technique on the top. Or maybe I will, I don't know. We'll see. All right, so. I think that's a pretty good match or somewhat of a match actually that might be a little dark 
That might be a little dark. I think I need to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of that. I've, the foam is making it turn out a little bit different. So that's what it looks like. So I'm just gonna cover these and I'll check back in. Now while our lids are drying, there's the other option. And that is using floral foam that you can get for just a few dollars at the at Hobby Lobby. We're gonna use that and I'm gonna clear off some space here so I don't, it's just the floral. I got the long ones. They come in different like uh, bendable, you know, textures or strengths or whatever. This is going to be the perfect length. I'm not sure if you can see. This will be the perfect length once I put it through each of these holes. And what I'm gonna do is thread it through the hole. It's been Mod Podged up. So I'm gonna have to use my handy dandy little pinchers and create that hole again. There we go. Pop that hole. All right, and I'm just going to thread it through to the inside, bring it up, and give it a little bit of a twist. I'm not done. No, no, we are not done. Because we're going to cover this to give it the texture of being kind of rusted and, and vintage. We're going to do the same thing. We're gonna add some, we're gonna add some stuff to it to get the look that we want. So I'm just gonna do that and then kind of twist it up to make it nice and secure. So there I have my little bucket. <laughs> now I need to get you guys a better angle here, so. And I'm trying to do this carefully. I do not want to get anything on my sweatshirt here. But I want to back you up so you can see. There we go. Maybe if I raise you a little bit. Ha ha! So, now we have our little thingy there. Oh, I can't wait for those lids to be dry. I'm so excited for this project. Oh my God! This is one of my favorite things. This is one of my favorites that I have done to date so far. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, and it smells like cinnamon because it is covered in cinnamon. Covered. Anyway, so then you have floral tape. And I got this, um, I don't think it has the color on it. It, yeah, it does. It says brown stem tape for $2.99. So I'm going to use this brown stem tape to cover this. It's going to give it a nice little bit of a texture, but look, it already looks a little bit rusted. And what I could do after I get it covered, um, what I might do is, let me get this roll started here. There we go. Okay. And you could have rolled it before um, before you attached it, but I want to cover this up so it's not sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and start my rolling. I'm going to back up so you can see better. And if you've never done this before, it's literally just, it sticks to itself. So you're going to give it a little bit of a tug as you roll it up. And what I'm going to do, and you don't need scissors, it's tacky but not real tacky. I'm going to work in sections because it's easier that way for me. And you're gonna pull it taut and wrap and pull it around. And you're just gonna keep covering until you get, get it covered all the way around. And it broke off, it breaks off easy it's just meant to cover, it's it's kind of like a camouflaging effect for floral wire. That's all this tape is. It it and it does a really good job of securing to 
floral stems and floral wire. So you don't have to necessarily worry about it coming apart, but it's kind of like crepe paper. So um, it's gonna give me a good base if I want to add my cinnamon technique to it, or I could just leave it as is, honestly, because the, the color actually lends itself really well. I'll tell you what, the next one I do, I'm going to probably wait, or I'm gonna, the next one I do, blah, 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 blah. The next one I do, I'm going to cover the stem before I attach it, because I think it would be easier. And then I will attach it and just add a little bit of extra um, floral tape to the, the ends. I think that's what I'm gonna do. But you know, live and learn, right? Live and learn. So while we are doing this, for those of you that, that are still watching, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Um, I wanna get this one out for this week. So this is, I, I don't know what today is. I, I don't know, but it's the, it's not Memorial Day weekend. It's the weekend before when I'm filming this. But I have been working on this project for two weeks <laughs> because it takes so long in between layers of Mod Podge, cinnamon, and paint. And then it took me a while to get that. Then I had to go to the store to get the floral stems because I didn't have the right floral wire, not stems, I keep saying stems, the, white, the right floral wire. So I wanted to run to the store to do that. And it has been a, a horrible, a horrible no good week at work. Let me pull you up. But, so what I'm doing, uh, what I've been up to while I'm threading this, um, other than work and just extremely busy with work, I'm working on a new project at work. It's a beast. Um, so that's taking up the majority of my time. And I've been filming bits and pieces of things as I can um, here and there to put together videos. So I will be doing a, the next next week's video is going to be Craft Room Reveal, which you see behind me, I've got my clear bins. It looks a little bit better than it has in the past, but you will see the rest of the um, the basement downstairs in the craft. Actually, I think you just see the, the craft room. I may show you the basement, I don't know. But I'm definitely going to show you, and the whole purpose of the video is to show you my craft room reorganization refresh. So that's next week. And then the week after that, we'll probably do a thrifting video and I'll show you some hauled things and we're gonna do like a little bit of a, a you know, we're just gonna do a haul, a haul thrifting video because I've been doing a little bit of thrifting here and there and I've got some things that I can show you. I've already styled, but I have filmed so, I can put that together. And then the week after that, we are going to decorate uh, for summer. I'm going to start putting out this week, I'm gonna start, cause all the other things have been filmed and are um, actually ready to go. They're in queue to be, um, they're in queue to go live on the dates that I want them to go live. So those are already done, I am on it. <laughs> I'm trying to be ahead so I don't stress. Plus, I made a commitment to myself with this channel and I made a commitment to you guys. I'm not gonna miss a Sunday upload, even if I'm busy, even if life happens. And trust me, life has been happening a lot lately. Life has not been easy, but anyway. Um, which is why this video is super important to me because this is my, this gives me a little bit of decompression time, a little bit, it's my happy place. Crafting is my happy place. Decorating is also my happy place, but I wanna say that probably creating and doing crafts and things that I can use in my home, having my own items that I have made to use in my home and my vignettes is where my, uh, my true passion is. I love doing that. I guess that's why the holidays are what I love the most. And I used to, I thought about um, just doing a holiday channel <laughs> and just doing stuff all around crafts and decorating for holidays. 
uh, but I chose to do like a curated home thing because that can fit anything and I can keep it going year round and not lose a lot of interest. So anyway, I am just about done with this. As you can see, it's a little bit tedious, but I'm gonna show you how it's looking. See? You don't, I don't have to do anything to it. I think this as is would be sufficient, but if you wanted to go ahead and add like a little bit of Mod Podge and then sprinkle it with some cinnamon, you could, definitely could. And what I might do for the other one is cover the stem, do the Mod Podge, do the cinnamon, and then attach it to the pumpkin and then finish it with a little bit of this so that those ends are not showing that twist through to attach it to the pumpkin, if that makes sense. So let me finish this up and then I'll be right back with the finished project and we'll close out this video. I'm so excited. So I think I found a little bit better way to give it a little bit more oomph. I'm doing twisting two together, but I'm leaving the ends open on either side. Um, so we're gonna twist these. Ooh, actually, I have a better a better idea. This one's fine. I'm going to leave it as is because I just did the work. So I'm, I'm not going to redo it. Um, but what, what I think, because see how it gives this braided look? I bet it would be cool if I braided it after I cream. Let's try that. Let's try and see what that looks like. So I have two that are in that floral tape. And now I'm going to... Leave about an uh, inch or so of them on inch and a half or so unwound together. And then I'm going to just begin twisting the stems together. So it kind of resembles wire. Now what I'm gonna do is get a little bit messy. I'm going going to use this Mod Podge Ultra Spray on all-in-one glue sealer multi-service indoor outdoor. No brushes, durable, and non-tacky. It kind of is tacky at first, but it dries non-tacky. I'm going to spray this on this, and then I'm going to sprinkle the cinnamon on top and see what that does. Um, and I'm going to do it over a trash can, so you're not going to see the whole part of it, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to do half and see how it goes and then do the other half. Um, I don't want to spray myself. We're going to see how that works. All right. And then I'm going to get my little sprinkle. See if this actually works. Oh, yeah. I go through a lot of cinnamon. I'm gonna need more cinnamon after this is all said and done. Now, it gives it a little bit of a rusted look. Let me show you. See? And then all I'm gonna do is respray it to seal the cinnamon on there. Spray it until you see that the cinnamon is wet. That's key because trust me, it's gonna dry and give it the effect. It's gonna work, I promise you. So now that I have that side done, I'm going to carefully do the other side. Probably will not do this to all of them because it's a little extra, <laughs> but I thought it'd be fun to try. Can't hurt, right? All right. Plus, you can always do this after it's attached. Um, it's just going to be tedious. All right, so this is what it looks like. If you can see. Sorry. So 
not focusing. That's kind of what it looks like. And when it's dry, it's going to give that texture of like rusted, rusted wire. So I'm going to finish assembling all these and then we actually are going to end this video. So I'm going to go ahead and say my goodbye here. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching this video and supporting it. If you liked this video and want to see more craft tutorials, comment below and let me know what you want to see. I do have an idea for another halfway to Halloween, halfway to fall um, faux food idea that I can do. So if you'd like to see that, comment below and I will get that posted this month for you guys. Um, but otherwise, thanks for stopping by and until next Sunday when we do this all again. Bye!